I wanted us to feel less alone as we continue to grow our company. I wanted us to be surrounded by other women who had dared to do something scary. So I started making a mental list of the women I knew. Even if we could just get 20 of them to pose for a photo, that would be incredible. Maybe other women would see that they could take risks and stand strong while they build their futures and be inspired. Look at the energy that's here today of women who are not just being recognized. I don't think this is about being recognized. It's about coming together and making a difference for this area. I'm the president and CEO of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. I have the great privilege of serving as the state senator for this district. I'm the president of the Children's Theater of Annapolis. When I was hired to teach robotics back in 1999, I was really excited. It seemed like the coolest job on the planet. And I remember at the time, my department chair, he looked at me and he pointed at this wall. And on this wall we have in our department, and it's all of the department chairs back to 1845. He pointed at this wall of men and he said, you're gonna be on that wall one day. You're gonna be the department chair. I've been in the position for four years and I think that it's awesome to celebrate these first. Like, I'm the first female department chair in my department, but I'm also looking forward to the time where we don't really notice the first anymore. And I love talking with all the midshipmen, um, but I also like really encouraging the young women so that they have someone that they can look at and think, I look like her, I could do this too. I'm a veterinarian and owner of Western Shore Veterinary Hospital. CEO of the Anne Arundel County Food Bank. We're a financial planning firm with a focus on serving women. I am a breast cancer survivor and my experience through breast cancer just inspired me to start and expand my practice in Annapolis because there's an epidemic of chronic disease and people are looking for a way to truly heal and functional medicine allows people to learn how to optimize their health and longevity. After a while, after a lot of loss that I had encountered uh, during the pandemic, I was like, why am I waiting anymore? I don't wanna wait. Who knows, retirement is not promised, tomorrow is not promised. Let's shoot through these fears and get through it and push through and start this business. I think one of the things that makes me proud is watching her um, step out on faith watching her do something that's outside of her normal character, and then watching all of our kids be proud of us. If I had the opportunity to tell my younger self something, it would be, um, be fearless. Um, Synovia mentioned loss earlier. Um, in 2022, I lost my husband to suicide. And so that has taught me that life is short. That's not just a saying, that is the truth. Um, and in that, I've had to show my daughter some resilience and courage in an amazing way. And I hate that it took tragedy to get there. I wish that resilience and that determination and that lion that I'm seeing in myself now was in my younger self. I am the Executive Director of the Partnership for Children, Youth and Families. I'm a farmer. Uh, we own Wild Kid Acres in Edgewater, Maryland. I'm a Mexican immigrant in Annapolis and I'm a community leader. I'm the academic dean and provost of the Naval Academy. Historian in Arundel County and the city of Annapolis. I would definitely tell my younger self from 10 years ago um, to not be so concerned with separating the profession from who you are as a woman. I work in a male dominant field and that can be complicated sometimes. And I think as leaders in our industry, we often say to ourselves, I can't be feminine, um, you know, I need to be uh, more conforming to the group. And what I have found and what I use now is that all of those things are incredibly important. When you're a leader and you have to make difficult decisions, you need to be in the most confident space you can possibly be in. I think in my early 30s when I was having babies, I was in a not so great marriage. I was so pushing up against everything and trying so hard and trying to do all the things and was stressed out all the time, which is funny because now I end up treating stressed out, <laughs> stressed out women. But I think if I could go back and tell that person, I would just tell her, hey, you can calm down. It's okay. It's going to work out better than you could have ever dreamed. I tell the story that my dad was a chemistry teacher. And so they did a lot of experiments. And he would remind me that an experiment that doesn't produce what you think it's going to do is just as valuable as one that does. So embrace them. Find your passion. 
continue along the way to do things that are adventurous and exciting and things that you are just thrilled to do. Never having run for anything in my life, I threw my hat in the ring. But it has been the thrill of my life. I would do it a million times over. I'm still scared, and that's okay. The moments that feel the scariest honestly lead to your largest advancements and your successes. I took it this leap because I want to be an able model, not only for my kids, for every kid everywhere. I always say, dream big and never give up. I would um, cup her face in my hands and I would turn her to a mirror and I would say, look at this girl in the mirror. Get to know this girl. Because she's the one that's going to be with you through the thick and the thin. She's going to be there through your triumphs, your failures. Take time. Get to know her. I'm a big believer of the power of collective impact. All we need to do is unite. I'm really motivated by that African proverb, which is, if you want to go fast, go along. If you want to have an impact, get things done, work together. Because when we unite, we truly can change the world.